Hey guys, Home Renovation DIY here, and today we are installing a front entry door on our shed. Now here's the cool thing, we're gonna use it just with the hand tools that we have and a drill and the level. And I'm gonna teach Matt today how to do this, because you've installed interior doors before, yep. but exterior doors are a little different beast. Okay. They come all pre-drilled and mortised, and the sill on the bottom is attached, so we can't install it anything but perfectly square. Anything else, and they rubs, and it won't close, and it won't lock, and oh, okay. we're in trouble, okay. all right? So we're going to go through the process with Matt on camera today because since he's never done it, he's most likely going to ask the same kind of questions that you were going to ask. What we want to do before we get started is just check the space. This is a 36 by 82 overall dimension. Very standard. I grab a big one for my shed because it's easier to get in and out of without damage on the door. What I want to do is just check for level to see if our framing is ready to receive a door. And this one's out. Big surprise. And this one's out just a touch. And you know, the fascinating thing here is, there's a couple of nail heads. Remember when we framed this? Yeah. Some of these nail heads went in on an angle and they're sticking out, all right? And believe it or not, that's gotta be fixed because that could be the difference of square or not square is that eighth of an inch, okay? So this one, this is even without the nail heads, it's out, all right? And I can see at the bottom, I've got a gap and I want to get it closed. I'll show you what I mean. There's the existing line. We have a triple stud over here. And two of them are part of the middle section and one of them is the next wall. And they're not screwed together. Why is that not moving? We nailed it to the, to the deck. Okay. Can you grab me the reciprocator? I've got to cut through that screw. All right, so this is the gap that's got to be closed, all right? But this part of the plate has a nail in it, and then we added the jack afterwards. Part of the issue that we're dealing with here. Okay, so we're gonna have Matt just cut underneath, loosen up that fastener, and then we'll screw it all together. Wait. Yeah, it'll be fine. You gotta find the nail first. Did I find it? Yep, you're through. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, there's two ways to do this. We could screw from here on an angle, okay? But it's gonna be easier if I screw straight across from here. Right? That's how I screw it together. But you'll notice my studs are now misaligned. So, I'm gonna show you a better way to get this done. And that's with using wood clamps. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna push the wall out and then clamp it shut first. Okay. Then drive the screws together. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this one as the piece that's connected to. Two screws on that side, and then two screws over here. Just because when you cut the bottom nail plate, you risk ruining the integrity of that bottom sill there. So now we're turning that into one piece of wood. Okay. Now we've got that taken care of. Let's take a look at, yeah, got any nails? Yeah. When you are framing something, traditionally we give ourselves two extra inches. So a 36 will make a 38 inch hole. But the truth is, that only gives you a quarter inch of space which is nice, but if you don't get it all square and sink your nail heads, a quarter inch of space gets eaten up in a real hurry. All right, now let's have a look at that now, Matt. Let me check this again. How does that look? We're good? Yeah, it's in between the lines. And that, that's perfect. I love it, perfect every time. Okay, one more quick little note. Yep. This 
door jam is four and a half inches wide, okay? And so that's designed for a two by four wall that's got a facade finished on each side, plus the brick mold. Now, traditionally, exterior doors, you get a brick mold. And it runs about an inch and a half thick, okay? So then the total thickness of the door is almost six inches. Yeah. What we're doing is a little bit different. We're gonna go flush to the inside okay. and overhang on the front. Oh, because our wall isn't as thick as the... Uh... Well, our walls are two by four and that's fine, but I'm gonna be building the facade a little bit differently so that it stays waterproof. Right. And so that I don't have to do any future treatment to it. Okay. Okay, so, and I got a trick in store for you, but we're gonna put it flush to the inside so that our hinges are right where the wood is so we're attaching one one screw in every hinge into the framing, okay? So you go and stick that over here. Well, first, we're going to double check how this fits. Yeah, just start at the bottom. Wiggle it in. There you go. We'll stand it up in place. Okay? Now we got loads of room up top. We're making contact with this piece right here. And I got lots of room to play around, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. All right, so let's bring this in. And first thing we're going to do is rip this thing off. Okay. Because we can't install the door with that there. We're looking for other screws or hardware on here that needs to be removed. There we go. I got two screws on this side that have to get removed, man. We need a Phillips bit. Don't know why they do this, guys, but check this out. Random screws with a strap. I don't... <laughs> Maybe it was a handle at one point for moving these things around. I don't know. Beautiful. All right. Okay go get rid of all these distractions here we are all right now next thing we're do is going to get matt to tape the the, the uh, bottom plate here and we do it the exact same way we did it's like a half and a half thing yeah so half you want to you want to do the lip you want me to ride up a little bit on yep. both sides you got it so the reason we want to use the tape is because you want to follow the path of water if it gets in behind all of your waterproofing water diversion system Inevitably, it will. Um, majority of homes in North America do not have any kind of water protection at the sill plate. And so what ends up happening is the water gets in behind the facade because a lot of them don't even have house wrap. Wind-driven rain. Just keep on going, bud. You don't have to yeah, wait for me. Yeah, I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. Yep. Do I just cut the corners here? No. Stretch it. Stretch it? Yeah, and then we'll throw a roofing nail in the front corners. Cool. Okay? Yeah. And so <laughs> what happens is water gets in behind, and then we'll have an expansion foam or something there, and it'll, it'll run down the side, and it'll hit the bottom. And so the reason we put the tape there is as a diversion system to run the water either into the building so it can dry out, or outside the building so it can run away. When you have a situation where the water sits there, that's when it rots out. And so a lot of you guys have got patio doors or front entrance doors, and at the very bottom, you start to see the rot happening up on the side. That's because underneath the metal sill of the door, it's completely shot. The subfloor is rotted out, the rim joists can be rotted out. So when you have an exterior door that stops functioning normally, usually it's because of rot due to improper installation, which isn't really improper, it just wasn't done back in the day. Like nobody really cared about water because the systems weren't perfect, they were designed for speed. There was a production oriented mindset back in the day. It was not about perfection, right? Remember, you can do things good, you can do them fast or you can do them cheap. And for most of the history of the United States and Canada, we wanted fast and cheap because we had massive amounts of immigration relative to labor force, probably for the last 80 years, okay? <laughs> All right, perfect. So, so how do you, I can't, uh, how do you stretch it? Well, hang on a second, I'll show you. So one of the reasons we use this tape is because when you pull the plastic back, okay, you can take the tape and you can stretch it around corners. All right? So you can make that continuous, waterproof way you hold it in place okay done that way we don't have a joint here that's gonna leak all right nice and simple now it doesn't look pretty doesn't have to <laughs> you just want to have something where the water has no other option but to run in or out 
because underneath it's trapped and it'll sit in the wood and that'll make whatever mold that exists in that wood to develop and grow. Now there's other systems out there. They actually have systems that are like a full tray, right? And they've got a lip and really, really extreme. It's not necessary to go that Mac Daddy, but basic best practice, get that corner pushed out of the way. There you go. Hold it down, throw a nail in it. Now you've got a system that'll stay waterproof and the water has no choice but to run into the building or outside the building. Okay, and if you really want to be a stickler and you got some extra tape, you can run an extra little layer right here and then up the side, okay? So you can do that too? Sure, why not? I think it's probably good practice for sheds because sheds don't have a heating system or air conditioning. And so uh, if you get water during a season where you've got high humidity, it's going to take weeks to dry out. So it's probably best to make sure that we're not holding any water underneath that door. Okay, so here we go. So you carry the weight with the door and I'll just direct this in place. All right. There we go. There we go. So instead of dragging it, we're going to lift it. We'll go flush on the inside. Okay, we're going to start off. Here we go. I got this now. We're going to close it up. Okay. What we're looking for here is I'm making contact in the top left corner. i got a little bit of room. Matt, can you slide the whole door to your left? To my left? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're still a little snug in that top corner. It's because what I want, I don't want to do it. I don't want to force the door into the hole. I want to force the hole around the door, okay? So let's try this, Matt. We're going to open this up again, like a door, the whole thing. We still have one spot here that's not working out. And that is up here. Okay. Probably our uh, so you see, tape. you see that gapping and stuff? The top, we're gonna have to fix that now. So I've got air, I can see daylight coming through here and here, right? And so there's a gap there. So what I wanna do is I wanna tighten this together and then I wanna hammer this over to make sure that we gotta push that top corner just a little bit. None of us are gonna be master builders. No, most of you aren't gonna have any experience with framing. And so knowing what is acceptable when it comes time to fuss around like this is the key to making your door fit. Now, I don't even know if I got much out of that. Okay. Uh, I think what we're going to find out here is that when you're installing your doors and you're framing, give yourself an extra half an inch. <laughs> Don't do the two inch rule, do the two and a half. All right, that'll make up for all these different minor variances. Right now, the only thing that's making me have a problem are these two little screws up here. Can you believe that? So they got screws in there to hold it together during shipping. Let me open this up. Okay, Joe, you see this? So this is staple, okay? And that's normal construction. But then they add these screws for during shipping. Okay, well, what they are right now is proud almost a quarter inch, they're in the way. So, we'll try this one more time. See, now that might be snug, but my gap is perfect. All right. Very nice. Okay, all right, so 
All right. Matt, you're gonna have to come inside now. Yep. I'll show you everything that's going on. The entire world likes to act like they can do things perfect, but we're dealing with wood, and wood is never perfect, all right? So what you wanna do is take a couple of shims here, first of all, lift the door. You want to lift the door? Yep, and set them on the shims. See, we're looking to make the shim pack about the same height as what the door is gonna be sitting at, so you're gonna hold it somewhat level. Okay, so that's about right. So lift it to sit on that, good. Okay, now your door should be somewhat square. So check the flush from the corner and the top and see if it's flush. Yeah, it's definitely not flush. No, the door needs to go up even more, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, so we'll start at the bottom, okay? Make that flush down there. Okay, see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Because I'm not carrying, asking you to carry the door. I just want to have the, I want the, the jam flush with the wall. Okay, so we gotta okay. kick it out more? If it needs to be, yeah. All right, first screw that we're gonna put in. All right, so if you're working alone, you can use the shims to hold the door. What we're gonna do, take out one of these hinge screws, okay? That does nothing for you. And for today, I've only got deck screws on me. I'm gonna replace these with silver screws a little later on. But now, Matt, what I want you to do is lift the weight off the door until the door is also flush at the top. Okay, now this is tight on this corner. That's fine, doesn't need a shim. Now, we're going to <laughs> close this door a little bit. Here we go, off the shim. Let's get the level um, surface of the hinges. Okay. And see if, when that's flush, if that's level. No, How gotta go out of the building. How much? A uh, quarter inch. Really? Can you put the level on the wall then for me? Wall's leaning backwards. The wall is leaning backwards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not concerned if the wall's leaning backwards, because mm -hmm. when you open the door, it's an inward swing. Mm -hmm. That way it's not gonna close on your butt by accident. Right. All right? So that's not a big issue, okay? So, so what I'm gonna do- make it level with the wall then, so that it opens and closes with ease. Yeah, because when you're looking at it, if you have to pick level with the wall or flush with the wall or level to the universe, right? Yeah. Yeah. What has more effect on how you finish the project? Level with the wall. Flush to the unit or level with the universe means nothing. Because once we get outside, you don't want to have it going from hero to zero at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep everything consistent, knowing that most doors aren't perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the screw. We're going to line some shims in there. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we are going to make sure that this sucker is looking good. Now, when you're doing a door, if you start on the hinge side, and see how it's sitting on the ground? Yeah. And it's sitting free? It's automatically square because it's sitting flush. Okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we grab shims. All right, now, now the shims come from zero to hero and back to back everywhere along this line is the same thickness, okay? If you're doing your shims like this, you're doing it wrong because you're gonna cause your door jam to twist, all right? So I always go back to back, slide two of these in there. Well, that's how we're almost perfect already, isn't it? Okay, now, if you want it thinner, because it's a little snug, what you do is you go like this. Now, it's still the same thickness here, here, and here, but it's a thinner thickness, okay? And that's how you do your shim work. So, we'll start like this, all right? And we'll hold the skinny one and we'll push the thick one until it's snug. We don't want to move the door out of square. We just want to make sure that it's snug. We'll double check the gap over here at the very bottom and at the top. The middle can be anything because it's just loose jam. But I'm looking at a nice gap here. Decent gap there. I don't like how my door is so close here, but not over there. Okay. So move the shims for a second. I'll just like, I'll show something to the uh, camera. If I take my door frame and I go left, look what happens to it. It pinches off here, right? So I want to make sure that I'm coming as square over here as I can up against this corner. So I want you to put in shims yep. and I want you to push it till it's as tight as you can make it. Because that way that'll force the corner and keep this gap more consistent. Okay. I'm basically pulling with this one and then pushing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you're there, well, I'm gonna make it flush and then I'll open the door and put a screw in it. Good. 
All right, there we go. Now, in a perfect world, I'm actually screwing right through the shim. But we're not flush yet. Let me uh... pinch them together so that they're both in alignment. Okay. Okay. Is the door flush? Yep. Okay. All right. Now, now we can test to see if the door closes. All right. Now that's nice. When I close the door from the handle, I've got the same depth off the edge, and that's just the gasket. So that alignment is really good, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop a screw from the middle, and then you're gonna shim it in place. Okay. There's not much gap there, but you still wanna use two because the, the frame is square. In the middle? Yeah. Yeah, super thin. So then, if it's too thin for the thick part of the shim, yeah. you have to do it. Yeah, start, start from the outside. In a perfect world, you want to use two no matter what. Okay. And it's the, the bottom quarter. We're using the second screw from the bottom. Uh, we're going to try the door again. Make sure we didn't pinch it too tight. If it's too tight, this gap will close up altogether. I'm going to say that's closed a little bit too much. Okay, I want to have it a little loose here. Just snuck the hole in place, because what happens when I drive a screw? Watch the jam, how much it moves when I drive a screw into a cedar shim. Okay, can I get you watching what happens to the jam right there? All right. Okay, because that's a cedar shim, it's softwood lumber, it compresses under the screw and it'll actually move. Mm-hmm. Lift that shim up for me. Watch the movement. Okay, it was small, it's like a sixteenth of an inch. But that's a big sixteenth. So when you're using shims, Put them to where things are snug, exaggerate it, mm -hmm. and let the screw pull it back to where you wanted it. Right. All right? That's the problem. And that is the system. Now, now that side is done. We can come over here and just line up flush. Okay? And we do the same thing. We put in three screws. Okay? Now, uh, I haven't told anybody this yet, but I don't want a white door. I want a black door. So I'm going to paint it in a few minutes. So. This gasket here, generally speaking, what we want to do is we want to get in behind it when we drive our screws so that when we're finished, it's covered, okay? But since I'm going to paint this door, I'm going to get rid of these and replace it with a black gasket after the fact, okay? Oh. For whatever reason, the doors that are sold at the box stores are metal doors, but then they come with primed wood door jams. It's not ready to be installed in the outside of a building without a paint shop. You gotta pay well over $1,000 to get a custom exterior door that doesn't need paint. All right, but for the most of us, we're buying, it's just building a shed, you wanna keep your price down. We're gonna do this, we're gonna drive our screws in right in this joint here. That'll be covered by the gasket later. This allows me to paint this door, and at the end of the day, you know, I can either install my lock and then put my deadbolt in here and maintain that gap so that it's not touching anything when it dries. Ah, uh, anyway. Sweet. Okay, step number 17. Yeah. Uh, we're shimming. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to shim uh, shim the right side too. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put in three more screws okay. on, this, on the side. Never use a screw on the top. Okay? And then we're going to use the shims. We're going to put in the shims until we feel it pushing the jam. Okay? Okay. So, down here you got a really good size gap. Okay. Yes, four shims. Well, thanks for me. And it's important that you set your shim around the same height as the other one. So, you know, you're right, about six or eight inches off the ground. All right? Now, that's pretty compressed, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty good. Okay, now close, close the door and double check. And what you're looking for is the consistency of the gap. Uh, I could probably uh, move the shims a bit to open up the gap a little bit more, because I okay. made it a little too tight. Okay, that's good, that's, that's soft. Remember, when I throw in this screw, it's going to pull it tight, right? Yeah, I'm just going to try it first quick just to check, make sure. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yep. All right, so this is the something that you only get to do once. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to do is start undoing all your screws, moving things around. Mm -hmm. One step at a time, make sure it's perfect. 
We're going to drive our screw where it's going to be hidden by that next gasket, holding onto the shim so they don't spin around. That's a way, way to get a really good injury, okay? Drive that screw flush to the surface, okay? You know what's interesting is, uh, it's a perfect gap. Yeah. I was going to say it looked like the, uh, what do you call this? The the jam. The jam. It looked like the jam kind of sunk in toward the wall when you screwed it in, right? It always so does it, a little bit. So you should almost kind of line up your shim so that when you do screw it, now it opens it. up that gap a little bit more. Now you're getting it. Okay, now the next thing you want to do, because the bottom and the top are already fixed as far as dimension. Okay. This is flexible, right? You want to shim here. Now, do we have any shims up here at all? No. In this particular case, the frame is a little crooked. The door is square, so that bottom corner there was right to the frame, and the top corner here is right to the frame. That's the end of our mercy. All right? So I'm going to let you finish this off. You screw up the top, and then what you want to do is instead of eyeballing here, you close the door and make sure that the contact at the bottom, when it's flush, is also flush up here. Okay? So you can check that just by going like this. Okay? Yeah. Reach across the top and check that one. Is that one flush? It is now, yeah. Door to the jam. Yep. Okay, so it's perfect. So you don't have to alter the frame. You don't have to twist it in or twist it out. Frame's in a great spot. So open the door and throw in that one screw at the same height as that hinge. Okay. Okay. And off you go to the race. Now, the spot is right there. Yeah. No, no, no. The oh, yeah, the, right where, the, where the hole is. You want to go straight, but you don't want to leave room for the head to pass there without damaging. It's a little tricky. There you go. End from the beginning. Okay, you got it. Now double check your door. <laughs> I know, it's a lot of opening and closing. That's what this is. Is it how would you flush? How would you say that looks? Is it when it's closed? Yeah, so the gap is a little bit bigger up top, isn't it? Because you see where your screw is? Yep. So there's room for a shim. So now you can open it up. Okay. We only have room for a little bit, so you can back the screw out. There you go. You'll notice that this gap opened up. That's all I can get out of it. Okay, I'll drive a screw. Okay, now we've got that perpendicular. Okay. Nope, it's still a little too tight. Back it up. My bad. Okay, try that. Okay, and this is where you can use your square. Now, that's perfect. All right? Yes. Good. Now, double check with the door. And if everything is square and flush and square and flush, then it all moves along really well. There you go, great shape. All right? So now all you gotta do is grab a couple of fresh shims, line up for the middle, to make your gap consistent from the door to the jam. Okay? Now, in this case, we've got a couple of things going on. We're gonna have the safety latch. We've got another latch down here. So you wanna put your shims right in between the two of them. Okay? And there you go. And just make sure your gap is consistent right here from the door to the jam. Um, right. And then when you're done, overcompensate for the screw compression. I would say that's pretty decent. Yeah, it is really nice. So overcompensate. There you go. Now screw, now drive the screw. All right. Same location. Square, just a little touch off. So No, no, don't go too far. Just enough to pass that. You want to make sure the gasket covers. All right, now try the door. Beautiful. All right, now open the door up halfway, like right around there, and let go. Okay? That's the test of a door. That's a great install. Cool. Okay? So, now we cut off the shims, right? Now we get rid of the shims. Yeah. The way that you work this is you want to score it on a bit of an angle. So you're actually cutting into the jam a little bit. So you start from flush on a couple of degree angle, and you can do it that way right through the whole shim two or three scores, or you can score it and then snap it. And generally speaking, it snaps pretty clean. 
or you can go grab your multi-tool and fuss around trying to vibrate that all off, but that just makes a mess in my experience. If you're not driving two screws into the jam, using a multi-tool just is a waste of time. There we go, nice and clean. And more packing. Okay, now you'll notice one thing. We left ourselves lots of room at the top, right? Yes, yeah, so you just foam that gap. Too much. No, we're gonna throw a two by four in first because we wanna have a nailing surface for all of our J trims. So cut me uh, 37 and 7 8. That's how tight that is. Like just there. <laughs> uh. All right. Okay. So we got a door. Gotta get that in there, man. Here we go. Beautiful. Whoop. Uh. Whoop. Ah. Oh. Ah. All right, now I know there's gonna be a few of your like, your experience with doors and be thinking, hey Jeff, what are you doing with this? Because the sill is overhanging. It's like a weak spot in here. Truth of it is, we're gonna be building a little deck porch patio out here when we're done. And we're gonna set this up so that our finished decking carries the load from the sill. It's gonna be very precision work, but it's gonna work. So this is gonna be the, the way I finish my building. I'm putting in my, my J trim to receive the siding. Before I put the siding on, I'm gonna be taping the seal shut. And then over top of that, I'm installing PVC trim, all right? So you don't actually see the J trim. The siding will just disappear in behind, all right? So my plan is to actually paint my PVC with an exterior paint that's gonna like last 20, 30 years, and the jam, and the door, I know I said it's gonna be a zero maintenance shed, but painting PVC and painting your door jam because of vertical surfaces lasts a good 20 years. It's the only paint I'm putting on the whole building. But I did, wasn't gonna sacrifice an extra 600, $700 to get a custom door so I don't have to paint it, all right? And that's just silly. So that's gonna be my plan. If 20 years from now, I gotta buy another quart of black paint and put another brush line on there, it's not the end of the world, okay? Okay, guys, take the opportunity here. Paint my front door. It's gonna to take two coats. You start this early in the day, you can have time to get them dry in between coats. And then you don't have to worry about closing your door when you go to bed at night. All right. It's the same thing. It's always just cut and roll all your details. Cutting first and then rolling over your cut. Less is more. It's okay if you see the streaks through the door in the first coat. What you don't want is to put on so much paint that you get lines and ridges. Whenever you're working on a smooth surface, just remember, less is more. All right. Rely on that second coat to do the job. Rely on the first coat to create the texture for the second coat to sit in really fine. <laughs> You're gonna get more coverage on the second coat than you will on the first on a smooth surface like this. That's normal. Don't put so much paint on there that it's solid black. Right? All you're gonna have is thick, thick brush lines. Now, you're gonna notice, yeah, Jeff, you didn't pull out any tape, you didn't cover the, the sill plate. What's going on, you crazy man? It's all about speed right now, guys. I am all about speed in a situation like this. If I get a drip or two of paint on my sill plate, I'm gonna grab the wife's nail polish remover and I'll take that off later. All right? Today is all about production. There we go. Use a nice, 
thin roller. You can even use foam in this situation because it's a smooth surface, okay? So if you're gonna go to the store and, and use that really thick bear paint that they sell, use a foam roller. It's the only hope that you've got I'm trying to get anywhere close to smooth. The truth of it is, good quality paints go on smooth. They don't go on with crazy texture. Ah, so, using a good quality paint in this scenario, the one that I'm using here, it's a PPG product from Dulux up here in Canada. Perfect for exterior applications like this. All right. Goes on nice and smooth. And the goal here is just to get the majority of this done with the screwdriver in the lock so it's not moving around on me. When I get close to finish, I'll open it up and do all the edges. Okay? Now when you open a door, this surface, this surface, and this surface should all be the same color. Okay? So we're gonna paint this one right to the edge. And then we're going to use the brush, nice and clean, okay, on this edge here, because there's a detail. And on the inside, we want to be able to cut that line right on the inside corner. So when you look at the door from the other side, all you see is white, which is what the inside color is going to be. Well, guys, if you want to, if you're not quite as comfortable cutting around hinges, feel free to just take the screws off and open that hinge up out of the way. And then you can reinstall the screws afterwards. I prefer not to when I can get away with it because every time you take a hinge out, it makes the connection of that hinge just a little bit weaker. So if you end up doing it once or twice for two coats, you're gonna find that you're gonna have to get longer nails. Longer screws in there to make that work, sorry. Okay. Here we go. Now, I don't have to go all the way to the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. When I'm all finished, I'm going to pull out a, a tube of polyurethane black uh, sealant for exterior. So I can do all my edges and corners and gaps. Make sure that everything is the way I want it. And I know that I'm going to be using um, uh, my, my PVC that I'm going to paint black over top. And I'm going to use that same sealant on the gap. So all I got to do is get my surfaces painted and then trust that sealant after the fact to get me the look that I want. Remember, every project is knowing the end from the beginning. That way, you don't don't end up with unsightly situations. If you know the solution before you even have the problem, it makes life a lot simpler. The rest of the store gym I'm going to do with a mini roller. Just want to get these details and in the corners. Okay, when you're using a mini roller like this, remember when you're putting on your paint, this half isn't unloading. So if you go too fast, it'll spray. Okay, so unload half of the roller. Gentle, and then flip it over and unload the other half so that they're both relatively dry before you start putting any pressure and speed to it. The goal here is just to even it out, avoiding drips. Here we go. Okay, spin it around. Okay, so same thing, I'm using one half the roller to unload. And then the other half the lower the roller 
See, it's not rolling, it's sliding. So there's that much paint on it. And just take our time. Continue to unload that paint. It starts to roll. <laughs> Go this wide open. The uh, locks are all mortised. We don't have to worry about inside the mortise. It'll all be covered with the hardware later. Now the way we finish this is with J-trim, the vinyl J-trim, that gets nailed in place and then taped to the weather proofing. But for good measure, there's nothing that says you can't get a coat of paint on that wood. Remember, it's all about what happens if water gets in behind. And if water gets in behind here, it starts to grow mold. So giving it a certain amount of weather proofing doesn't hurt. a hell of a lot prettier. Okay, the only thing left for me to do now is paint my PVC on the couple of sides there. Get that all fixed up, ready to roll. Matt's setting us up for our siding. That's gonna be in the next video, so make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Check that out. That's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna start the siding on this project, and that'll be in the video next week. Cheers.